Oh, come and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that he is the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. For we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We have entered into these gates with thanksgiving. And into these courts with praise. We will be faithful unto him and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth unto all generations. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I wish I had somebody this morning that came to have church. I wish I had somebody this morning that just wanted to give God a praise this morning. I wish I had somebody this morning that knew that God woke you up in your right mind once again, gave you the activity of your limbs, gave you a reasonable portion of health and strength, gave you a mind that you can think right, gave you a heart that you can live right, gave your feet that you can walk right, gave your hands that you can praise his holy name. But we've come to praise his name on this day. He is our God, and we are his people. Why don't you stand on your feet, all those who can, and join me in prayer. Almighty God, our Father, we thank you again for the privilege in which you have given us to come before thy throne of mercy, because mercy suits our plea. We've come this morning, God, first of all, saying thank you. Thank you you for mercy as well as grace that suits our plea on this day. So we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come now and invade this place. Let your presence be known here among your people today. Pray right now that you lead us in our worship today and that our worship and our praise will be pleasing in your sight. Because, God, we want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the honor. We want to give you all the praise because it all belongs to you. So we thank you this morning for another opportunity to come to this house of praise to praise your name. Now lead us, Holy Spirit, that we may do thy blessed will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Are we singing this every morning? As we remain standing, as we sing the Black National Anthem, lift every voice and sing. In your hymn books, it's found in page 477. Lift every voice and sing. The choir's going to lead us. Come on, choir. They got it on the screen there, too, so you can see that far. Lift Lift every voice. Lift every voice and sing. Till earth and heaven. Till earth and heaven. Ring Ring with the harmony. Ring with the harmony. Of liberty. Let our rejoicing Let our rejoicing high, high as the mystery's God. Let it resound. Let it resound. Loud. Loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song.
Please remain standing for our reading of our scripture this morning, coming from the book of Philemon this morning. Philemon in the New Testament, in the New Testament. Philemon. In the NIV this morning, you find these words that Paul records this little letter to his friend by the name of Philemon. <clears throat> Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, also to Aphia, our sister, and Achippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your love for all his holy people and, his, and your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appear to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do <coughs> would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. Amen. You Amen. may take your seats. Praise be unto our God. 
first Sunday of the month of February, which is Black History Month, we remember our heritage, remember those who were before us, who paved the way for us. We've come now at prayer time in our church. We're going to ask our chairperson of our deacons ministry, Deacon Shirley Strobe, and if she would come this morning and lead us to the throne of grace. And as she comes to pray this morning, we're going to lift up Sister Jackie DeWitt, who texted this morning and said she's been in the ER all night. So we want to lift her up in prayer. There may be somebody this morning that you know that needs our prayers also. We ask that you would pray for them this morning, realizing it could be you standing in the need of prayer. And I heard somebody say a long time ago, on the wellest day of your life, you sick enough to die. So all of us stand in the need of prayer. Pray, Deacon, lead us this morning. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you humbly and boldly. Thank you that you woke us up this morning. You woke us up with gifts, Lord, mm -hmm. the gifts of salvation, gifts of undeserved grace, mm -hmm. mercy, yes. and your love, and most of all, the gift of your son, Jesus the Christ. Yes. Father God, we're asking you to go into the hospitals, Lord. Touch each and every person in there. Touch the doctors, Lord. You've given them knowledge, skills, all kinds of mm. technology. But Lord, we need you in there to touch and just hold them. And Father God, we're asking you to comfort the families of those three soldiers that were killed yes. on last week, Lord. They're here, safe and sound, back on American mm. soil, but the families have to go through a burying them. And Father God, we're asking you to comfort them you know, as only you know how. Oh, yes. Father God, we have bereavement in our own church. We're asking you to comfort the family. Mm. Give them strength, Lord Jesus. Dry their tears, Lord. Hold them close beside you. We, Lord, we're asking you to watch over our teenage boys and girls, Lord. Yes. There's so much going on in the streets with them, Lord. Mm. Cover them, protect them, keep them safe. Our kids on the college campuses, Lord, we're asking yes. you to watch over them, keep them safe, Lord, as they go to yes. school and try to learn. And Father God, we're asking you to just be in charge of our day from beginning to end. And Father God, we know that you can do anything. Mm. Nothing is too hard for God. Teach us to pray, Lord. Teach us to have faith, Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. Teach us, Lord, that nothing is too hard for you. Mm. And te teach us, Lord, that you are always in control. Mm. God, we love you. We need you. And continue to bless this <coughs> as we celebrate Black History Month, Lord, and and we realize that black lives do matter. Yes. We love you, Lord. We praise you. And Father God, let us prepare. Get ready for Jesus. Jesus oh, yes. is coming back, y'all. Please mm -hmm. believe it. Receive it and believe it. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear
bless you. Thank you, Deacon Strowman, for leading us this morning to the throne of grace. Someone from our greeters ministry is going to come now, and I want to greet everybody on this morning. Sister Penny is coming this morning. She's coming as Penny, not the groom. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> it is so glad to see each and every one of you. I'm very happy to see each and every one of you. As the pastor just stated, on your happiest day could be your last day. Do we have any visitors? Friends, family, present, would you please stand? <laughs> this is our first lady, Lady D. Now you will hear further remarks from our pastor, Bobby A. Elder. Thank you, guys. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Penny, and to the gentleman who stood this morning. Well, uh, I don't have to say it. Y'all heard it. And, uh, praise be to God. We're just so happy to have you here with us on this morning to come and to worship with us. We do realize that you could have gone someplace else, but we thank you for coming to Mount Lebanon to be with us on this morning. And we want to let you know that we are grateful to you this morning because we realize that you didn't have to come here, but you cast your lot with us. And so we say thank you. And we don't just say it because it's a cliche. We say it because we mean it. And because we want to let you know that we love you and that you can't do a thing about it. Even if you tried, you can't stop us from loving you because we have the love of Christ on the inside of us. So God bless you and thank you for coming. You don't have to just be here on this Sunday, but any time that you're in our vicinity, please come to worship with us here at Mount Lebanon. For those who may be online who are watching this morning, we welcome you to this Pentacle of Proclamation known as the Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. We are located at 1141 Campus Bella Road, the beautiful city of Norfolk, Virginia. And we are grateful for you being a part of our worship experience on today. And so we say welcome to Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. And don't be a stranger. You can come to the sanctuary to worship with us. We would love to have you with us here at Mount Lebanon. Amen. And God bless you. Church clerk is going to come now with a few announcements, and then Sister Sheila will be coming. Come on up here. Sister Sheila's going to play you in the back back there. Sister Sheila's going to follow this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, first of all, Pastor Bowers and the MLBC um, church members will be the guests of Woodland Avenue Baptist Church on Woodland Avenue in Norfolk at 1.30 today. So please come out and support. Uh, this is National Black History Month. We celebrate the vast contributions of black Americans to our country and recognize that black history is American history. And the black culture, stories, and triumphs are at the core of who we are. The 24th theme is African Americans in the arts, black history moments each Sunday in February. Our black history Month dinner will be on Sunday, February 25th, and please wear your African attire. This is also American Heart Awareness Month, and because our heart matters, Women of Worth Ministry is asking that you wear red on Sunday, February the 11th. On Thursday, February 15th, from 7 to 8.30, there will be a heartwarming prayer meeting here at the church. There will be soup and sandwiches to sup at. Also, this is Valentine's Day the 14th, and as we're rising to a new level of advancement, this can be a day to show appreciation for your family, friends, expressing your love and affection for each other. So whatever you do, please celebrate the day. Thank you, and have a blessed week. church. Good 
Today we kick off Black History Month at MLBC. Each year in the month of February, we celebrate our history and our youth. We are fortunate to have a Terrence Carter Scholarship Fund to send our youth to colleges and help support them as they continue their education and higher learning at any institution that they choose. A special thank you to everyone who donates to our scholarship fund every year. This year, a donation of $25 will go towards our Black History program and our dinner, which will be held on the last Sunday in the month. Black History Month is an annual celebration of achievements by African Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in U.S. history, also known as African History Month. The event grew out of Negro History Week. The historic Carter G. Woodson and other prominent African Americans made this possible for us. Since the abomination of slavery, the U.S. government passed several laws to, to address discrimination and racism against blacks. In 1976, every U.S. president has officially designed the month of February Black History Month in other countries around the world help us celebrate, including Canada, United Kingdom. The Black History Month theme for 2024 is African Americans in the arts. Each Sunday, the Black History Moment will explore history from key people in our Black history from now, today, and beyond in the field of visual arts, performing arts literature, fashion, music, film, and other forms of culture. On Sunday, February the 25th, we will celebrate the last Sunday by a dress up Sunday with your own African attire of your choice and a delicious dinner after morning service. Lift every voice and sing, Black History Month 2024, our history, our culture, 365, 24 seven, all day, every day. two or three minute presentation. <coughs> Just gave me a three second presentation, but that's all right. That's good. Amen. Amen. Just a few words of announcement this morning. We can uh, you scroll on the screen again. Um, there are some individuals who have come from this church and have done great things and we definitely want to recognize, we definitely want to recognize them. Just want to say this afternoon that we are the guests at Woodland Avenue at 1.30, so you got time to go home and grab a bite to eat. Get over to Woodland Avenue. They're having leadership day um, as we had last week, so we want to go and to uh, bless them on, on today. I do want to emphasize again the Terrence Carter Scholarship, and we ask and remember to give $52 if you can. Um, you can break it down, or you can give a dollar a week, or however you choose to give it. Uh, but just we ask that you try your best to give $52 that we can help uh, some of the young people from our church uh, to have a scholarship, have some money to go to school to advance their education. So you have been faithful in the past, Mount Lebanon, continue to be faithful uh, in the future, and we are grateful for that. If you were born in the month of February, stands, the February of your birthday month, you, got, you were born in February. Brother Willis was born in February. All right. Anybody in the choir? Okay. All right. All right. It's just, just the two of you today. Amen. All right. Praise God for you. We want to say happy birthday to you. And we want to let you know that we're praying for you and we are asking God to continue to bless you, that you even see another birthday and another one on top of that, that he keeps on blessing you. And the more he blesses you, we pray the more you would bless him back realizing it is he who keeps blessing us to be a blessing to someone else. And so on your birthday day, we pray that you would celebrate. Celebrate like it's 1999. You know how Prince said that, didn't you? Don't y'all try to act all dignified, y'all know. 
celebrate like it's 1999, like it's the last one because we don't know. It could be the last one, but we want you to celebrate. And we want to celebrate with you and say happy birthday to you. God bless you. We're going to sing happy birthday. Come on. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <coughs> many, many more wonderful, wonderful birthday celebrations. Amen. If you get married in the month of February, stand. If February is your anniversary month, come on, stand on your feet. If you got married in, in February, February, February. Got a whole lot of comments from the peanut gallery today. <laughs> you know what it is. All right. It's anniversary time. At, uh, Sheila and Lonnie, uh, we always together at, at anniversary time. So I'm going to ask Lonnie again at, if he can count back that far. How many years y'all celebrating this year, Lonnie? Come on, come on, get, get the mic right here so everybody can hear you since, since you want to say it. You want to say it to your sweetheart. Touch one, two. You need to let that person in your life know how much they mean to you and appreciate them. And I just want to say this, uh, Sheila, we've been together for 30, 35 years to exact. And we've been through a lot. We had some good days and some bad days. And I just want to let you know that God is working in me and changing me. And I ask for you to forgive me if I haven't been a husband to you or the father to my two lovely daughters that's not here today. And with that, I also want to say, February the 14th, 2004, I ask you and I to um, to take my wife and hand in marriage. And I ask you to be my Valentine's Day dinner to you. Happy <laughs> Thank you. You make me feel brand new. I sing this song for you. You make me feel brand new. Well, we said 35 years, Lonnie. 35 years. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, what, I, what I'm going to do? <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Well, <laughs> oh boy. Put a lot of pressure on her brother. Well, what you got? <laughs> Well, listen, um, we've been married now for this year would be 49 years. Mm. We, we, were, we were high school sweethearts, so we, we dated for several years. Um, I don't know if she fell in love with me because of my daddy's car, <coughs> or just what it was. My daddy had a midlife crisis uh, back in 1970. 
he was in his 40s, and he bought him an orange uh, road runner. Wow. Y'all remember that? Yeah. He bought him a road runner. So when daddy bought a road runner, that means I had a road runner. <laughs> and so I got to take her out, first of all, in the road runner, you know, and uh, we, we thought we were somebody. It was a brand new road runner. A amen. And so that's how we got hooked up together. Like, don't stop fanning, baby. You ain't got to keep fanning. Everything going to be all, be all right. Lord have mercy. <laughs> So we, we've been together every, every since, and, and like Lonnie said, marriage has ups and downs. It has changes, it has turnarounds. Uh, but when the Lord brings you together, it's the Lord that helps you to stay together because you can't stay together without the Lord's help. And I know the Lord has blessed us through our ups and downs for us to be together all the years with our two girls, and we were blessed even us on yesterday to have our whole family together as we celebrated uh, my father-in-law's 90th birthday. We celebrated that on yesterday. So we are just so grateful for how the Lord has blessed us. I'm not going to try to sing a song, try not to top Lonnie today, because I'm going to just give him today. Yeah. I I'll let him have today. I don't want to try to come on top of him today. Okay, that's the kind of guy I am, Lonnie. <laughs> oh, okay. I, didn't, I, I wanted to go into my Al Green collection. Uh, no, no, stop, stop trying to push me, okay, right there. Yeah. I, if I didn't go into my Al Green collection, I could go into my Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, uh, you, you got that too? Okay, y'all got all that. Y'all hold on to all that. Okay, all right. But listen, sweetheart, I love you, and um, I pray that you would continue, we would continue to love each other. And as we celebrate another year, another milestone, as we have been blessed by the Lord to be together. God bless you, and heaven smile upon you. Lonnie and Sheila, God bless you also. Happy anniversary to you guys. Go out, celebrate. Go somewhere you've never been before. Do something you've never done before. Remember, you serve a great God. You serve a God that can do the impossible. So act like it. Jesus came that he said that we may have life and have it what? More abundantly. Not after we get to heaven. I get sick and tired of folks talking about, you know, uh, when I get to heaven. I don't know what that's going to be like. But I do know what's happening here on earth. And we can enjoy each other and God placed us together. So happy anniversary to you guys and happy anniversary to us also. Amen. 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 Choir's going to now come and sing and then we will come back with the word for the morning. Come on, sing choir. <laughs>
Come on, bless God for the choir this morning. Amen. Amen. Right on, King Jesus. No man can not hinder me. Praise be unto our God. I'm so grateful this morning to be here once again as we celebrate Black History Month. We look back and see what the Lord has done, what the Lord is doing. And we are appreciative of what the God is about to do in our lives. Come on, join me now in prayer as we started this morning. Almighty God, our Father, we thank you again. This time that you've given me to stand behind this sacred desk. Come now and speak as only you can. Give me a word this morning, God, that brings hope to the sinner, healing to the sick, help to the saints. I pray, God, that I would say it right. Let them hear it right. Let us do it right. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the book of Philemon, again, I want to go back there. Where we concluded at reading up to verse number 16. I want to pick up at verse, six, verse 17 and just read a couple verses right here. <clears throat> Philemon, Philemon, chapter 1, and that's all it is, chapter 1. If you're looking for chapter 2, it ain't there. 
it's like Jude. It's only one chapter. Amen. Verse 17, Paul says these words to Philemon. He says, so if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you, has done you any wrong or owe you anything, he says, charge it to me. I want to tag the message this morning with this subject. How deep is your love? How deep is your love? Some of you didn't say amen because your love is shallow. And I understand. That's all right. But we can help you with your love. How deep is your love? Well, it's Black History Month. I, Black History Time. Month is a time for us to do some reflection. It's a time for us to go back and look back. But Black History Month is a time that we need to focus on retelling our story, which is important because uh, there are those who don't want our story to be told. Those who are trying their best to make our story something that they want it to be and not what it is by itself. There's an African proverb that says, until the lion tells his side of the story, the tale of the, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Did you get that? I'll give it to you again. The African proverb is, until the lion tells his side of the story, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. You listen, you see, we represent ourselves to ourselves through the stories that we tell of those who came before us, those who paved our way, and those who paved the way for to freedom, those who shaped us <coughs> into who we are. So when we look back on our history, we ought to always honor the lives and experiences of our foreparents. We all should always be commemorating great men and women of the faith who marched on before us. Through black history initiatives, we celebrate the faith that has sustained our communities for centuries, and our, so and our souls ought to always cry out, bless the Lord, and forget not his benefits. We've got so much to tell in our stories, but our stories cannot be told by other folks. It has to be told by us. We want the truth of our stories to be told and not fabricated and, and not slanted, sl slanted in a way in which it favors somebody else. But it is what it is because that's what history is. Well, during the tumultuous years after the Civil War, as Louisiana struggled to recover and its social order was reshuffled, there were three black men who rose to power. Each of them became lieutenant governor during this period, and one even became governor for, for a short period of time before they kicked in with Jim Crow laws. You know what Jim Crow laws were, don't you? The laws of practices designed to separate whites and blacks in public and private facilities. But, but these three men who rose to power during that time put their names etched, etched them in history to let us know that even way before 1900, that there were black men who had power, who stood in positions of power. Those three men in Louisiana were a fellow by the name of PBS Pinchback, PBS Pinchback, Pickney Benton Stewart Pinchback, who became the first African-American governor to serve these United States of America. But then there was a fellow by the name of Oscar James Dunn, who followed and became the lieutenant governor of Louisiana. And then there was Caesar Antonius, who also became the lieutenant governor back in the 1800s. These men stood and stood tall and strong in a time when folks wanted to oppress us to, and keep us down, didn't want us to rise up to positions in government, positions of power. But, but these men fought, even during the Civil War time, they fought and, and they rose to the top 
even when folks didn't want us to rise to the top. That's why this morning I think somebody ought to send a message down to South Carolina and tell Tim Scott there were some folks who fought for you to get the position that you are in right now. It ain't always been this way. And if you're going to tell our story, we got to tell it the right way how it was. So this morning, from the text this morning, which we read, if I can set the text up for you this morning, here's a fellow by the name of Philemon. Paul writes this letter, this little short one-chapter letter to his friend by the name of Philemon. Philemon has a slave. His name is Onesimus. Onesimus has somehow escaped. He's run away, and he's made his way probably to Rome where Paul is. And, and when he gets to Rome Paul, where Paul is at house arrest, somehow they make their connection. And Paul, during that time, had uh, Onesimus converted to Christianity. Paul knew about Philemon, knew that Onesimus was his slave, knew that Onesimus has probably run away or has stolen away, but, but yet his life has been changed. And, and because his life has been changed, Paul now wants to stand up to show his love that he has for Onesimus, but also show his love that he still has for his friend Philemon. So Paul is now caught in between Philemon and Onesimus. And so Paul this morning wants to show what you ought to do when you're caught between two lovers. Well, what you ought to do when you got a friend on this side and, and a new friend on that side. Paul wants us to show this morning that, that you got to do the right thing no matter what and no matter how it hurts or how somebody feels about it. You just got to do the right thing because love always do the right thing. Love always does the right thing. Can I get somebody to smile this morning if, if you know what love is this morning? But Paul says, I, I, I got to stand between the two of them. But, but I got to let love stand between us. So this morning, the question I want to lift from the text is, what, what, what does love do when it's caught between two friends? What does love do when it's caught between two friends? Well, well I'll tell you just real quickly, but three, three quick points right here. What, what, what love does when it's caught between two friends? It, what, what love does is this. Love always reminds us, us that we are brothers. That's what love does. Love always reminds us that we are brothers. And brothers, Maurice, have to always appreciate each other. Look at somebody and say, I appreciate you. L -l love, that's what love does for us between brothers. Love always reminds us that we are brothers, but love always lets us know as brothers we have to appreciate each other. If you back up to verse number 5 and 7 here in, in, in this little book right here, Paul says from the Message Bible, he says, I keep hearing of the love and faith you have for the Master Jesus, which brims out, which brims over to other believers. And I keep praying that this faith will hold in, hold in common, keep, that we hold in common, keep showing up in a good thing, in a good way. And, and that people recognize Christ in all of it. He says, friend, you have no idea how good your love makes me feel. Paul let, let, lets Philemon know that, that, that they are brothers in Christ, but, but that love between the two of them is there between them, even though Paul now has, has Onesius, Onesimus, who is Philemon's slave. Paul has him there with him, but Paul knows that as a brother in Christ, you got to let a brother know that you appreciate him. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but, but you ought to just let somebody close by you know that, that I really appreciate you, not just because you are my brother in Christ, but I appreciate you just because you are a brother anyway. Ah. You see, and, and we don't all, you see, we don't always appreciate the gift of friendship. Sometimes we take friendship for granted. You, you, you want to know well, why, why, why friendships get messed up from time to time? It's because we take that friendship for granted instead of letting somebody else know that we appreciate each other. And every now and then, you, you just got to let somebody know that you really appreciate them. And I ain't talking about just telling them you appreciate them, but you got to show them because love is an action word, and, and love always shows how love feels. And if you feel like you 
you love somebody, you got to show somebody that you love them. Every now and then, a, a man can't keep talking about how he loves his wife. Every now and then, he's got to bring some flowers some flowers on. Every now and then, he, he got to do something special to let her know that he loves her. Every man got to understand today that, that you got to show her how much you love her. Every woman, every now and then, you got to go in the kitchen sometime. Let the man know you. <laughs> let you know you love him. Uh, I mean, Burger King good every now and then. My God. What we got a kitchen for? You got to show your love. You got to show your love. But Paul lets us know this morning what, what love does when it's caught between two friends. Love always reminds us that, that, that we are brothers. So what Paul does when he writes to Philemon, he lets him know that, that we are still brothers in, in Christ because Philemon, you, you were here with me at one time. And even though you are not here with me right now, I still love you and I still appreciate you. But I got to tell you that because I really mean it. So what love does when love is caught between two friends, love, what it does is love reminds us that we are brothers. And every now and then, I, I believe so some brothers ought to just rub elbows with some other brothers. Let them know that, that, that we are brothers and we love each other. Well, not only does love reminds us that we are brothers, but every now and then love refreshes our brotherhood. Love refreshes our brotherhood. You see, love causes brothers to appeal to each other. And you see, Onesimus is now, is now saved. He, he has now, have, his life has now been converted. Onesimus, his name means profitable and useful. So Paul now realizes that Onesimus really should be with Philemon, but even though he's there with him, Paul, Paul wants to let him know that this really, I, I really could demand uh, I really could de de demand that you let him stay with me, but I'd rather appeal to you for the sake of love that, that you just let him stay here with me, but he not more than that, but, but even while he's here with me, don't get upset with him. Just know he's in the right place. He's in the right place. Verse 9 through 11 says, it says, but because I, Paul says, but because I love you. I, I make a request instead. I, I, I do this even I, even though I am Paul, the ambassador of Christ Jesus, and at present also a prisoner for, you, for his sake. So I make a request on behalf of Onesimus, who is my own son in Christ. For while in prison, I have become his spiritual father. At one time, he was no use to you, but now he's useful both to you and to me. You see, a refresher for all of us is to revisit our past. For all of us, if we're going to have a refresher every now and then, we got to go back and revisit our past. We can't just stay here, but, but we got to let our minds every now and then go, go back. Don't stay there, but let your mind go back for a moment to, to realize what the Lord has done for us. And we got to refresh our brotherhood. Every now and then, when, when I think about my brotherhood, I, I, I think about how, how the old folks would say, from whence he has brought me. And that when I look back at my life, I, I, I realize that, that I'm not where I am right now because of me, but from whence he has brought me. Every now and then, when, when I think about, I, I think about what he has protected me from. Every now and then, when I go back, I, I remind myself from the mess he brought me out of. And Paul lets Phanesimus know that, that, that yet, Phanesimus, you have always, you haven't always been where you are right now. You were under me at one time, and I just want to let you know, you ain't always been where you are right now. You ought to hunt somebody this morning and let them know, you ain't all... You ain't always been where you are right now. Refresh your mind right now. Don't, don't linger there, but just for a moment, go ahead and, and look back and, and let the Lord refresh you because if you take the time to refresh yourself, the Lord will remind you that it was he who brought you 
from a mighty long way. It was he who picked you up when you were down in the muck and the mire. It was he who was holding your hand when you were walking in darkness because all of us have been runaway slaves because we all ran from Christ at one time in our lives. But the good news is, is that Christ kept on shining the light even in the midst of darkness when we couldn't see our way. Listen, Paul said, I got to make this appeal to you. Paul, Paul, Paul didn't owe Phoenicia any, Philemon anything. Philemon really owed Paul, but, but Paul didn't want to command that he receive Onesimus, but he wanted him to do it for love's sake. You, you see, love always reminds us, but then also love refreshes us. But what does love do when you're caught between two friends? Lastly, love gets the brother in need restored. Okay, y'all missed that right there from the text right there. Love gets the brother in need restored. You, you see, when brothers appreciate each other and appeal to each other, love brings assurance to the table. That, that, that's what love does. When you appreciate me and, and I appreciate you, Love calls us to appeal to each other when there's a difference between us and when we appeal for each other because we appreciate each other. God lets the assurance bring us to the table and we are able to solve our issues. Look at verses 15 and 16 and I'm done this morning because Paul says maybe it's all for the best that you lost him for a while. You, you're getting him back now for good and no more a slave at this time but a true Christian brother. You, you see, some people are in your lives only for a season. Yes, just for a season in your, your life. And, and people, I want to tell you this today, that people are more than their worst deeds. People are more than their worst deeds. See, every, not now and then, we, we look at folks and, and we see what they have done wrong, but you can't just look at that one thing they've done wrong and hold that on top of them. You've got to understand, they are better than that, that one deed that they have done wrong. No, baby girl, if you look at your record, you will see that you got some stuff on your record that God forgave you of. God cast it into a sea of forgetfulness, when you take a time to look at your record, you will realize that you messed up not just one time, but over and over and over again, and God still bless you. When you take the time to look at your record, you ain't always been squeaky clean. You've been dirty, dirty, low down, and dirty, but the Lord clean you up with the blood of his son, Jesus, and because the Lord clean you up, it's the love of God that brings us together. Listen, so, so Paul, Paul, Paul says this, Paul says, so if you think me as a partner, welcome Onesius back, just as you would welcome me. And if he's done you any wrong or owe you anything, Paul says, Charge it to my account. Now, now, hold on right there because that's where true love kicks in. <sighs> okay, y'all looking at me like I'm strange, like I'm from Mars somewhere. No, no, I'm just from Venus, that's all. L listen, listen, that, that, that's when true love kicks in. When, when you say, charge it to my account. Okay, some of y'all on the left side ain't got it. Y'all some of you on the right side. Y'all, y'all got it. Some of you on the left. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't got it right now. See, it, that, that's where true love kicks in when somebody has done you wrong and, and they owe a debt. You say, charge it to my account. Yeah. Oh, okay, y'all, 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 y'all still ain't got, got it. I give you one more time. Third time a charge. Third time a charge. Listen, it, it, every now and then, when you want to show your true love for your friend. You, you will tell somebody if they've done something wrong, if they've messed up, if they owe you anything, charge it to my account. Well, well, hold on because I got news for you this morning because if you ain't shouted right now to let somebody know because when you really show your true love, you are showing how deep your love is for somebody else. And you got to, when you stop to look back at your life, 
you, you will find out that that's what, G, what God did for us through Jesus. He showed us his love. He showed us how deep his love was for us. Well, what can we learn from this little story this morning? We can learn from the story this morning that just like Onesimus, all of us have been runaway slaves. Adam disobeyed and made mankind a runaway slave. Moses' fear for his life put him on the run. And we all have run away from God when we have done wrong because we didn't want anybody to know the wrong that we had done. But you ought to tell somebody this morning, I read in my Bible what Isaiah said in Isaiah 53 and 6. Isaiah said, all of us like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Well, I don't know about you, but, but we hope no one would find out. We would also hope that no one will find out sometime the wrong that we have done. But when I think about the wrong that we have done, I, I, I think about how God sent Jesus to us. Paul says in 1 Timothy 5, 2 and 5, Paul says, for there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, and that is Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus, like Paul, became our advocate. He became our elder brother, and Jesus told the Father, if they owe anything, put it on my account. I'll pay for it. That's why when we look back, we see that Jesus came through 40 and 2 generations because we had a debt that we could not pay. And because we couldn't pay the debt, God sent Jesus. And Jesus said, whatever they owe, I'll pay for it. So that's why they hung him on an old rugged cross one Friday afternoon. And they buried him on a, in a borrowed tomb that Friday afternoon. But early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. But before he got up, he had already shed his blood for the remission of sin. And what he said was, Bobby, because you messed up, my blood will pay the cost that you owe. You really owe your life, but my blood, I'll pay for your debt with my blood. And I don't know who I'm talking to on this morning, but he didn't just pay my debt. He paid your debt because you owed him your life. And because you owed him your life, he shed his blood for the remission of sin. Good at, good morning, Mount Lebanon. May the Lord bless you real good. But I don't know about you. I got a question that I got to ask you this morning. How deep is your love? Do you really love the Lord? Has the Lord heard your cry? Has the Lord pitted your groan? I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. And long as I live and troubles rise, I'll hasten to his throne. Why you going to do that, preacher? I'm going to do it because he paid my debt for me. I'm going to do it because I owe him my life. And because I owe him my life, because he shed his life, I got to let somebody else know that the love of Christ is on the inside of me. I hope you have a good day. Have a good evening today. But I got to ask you one more time. How deep is your love? Do you love your brother? Do you love your sister? Do you love your neighbor? Do you love your friend? Because if you love your brother, you love your brother just like you love yourself. And you can't love Christ until you love your brother. Paul says to Onesimus, Onesimus this morning, bro, I got you. I got you. I, I know you can't go back to Philemon right now because you run away, but I got you. So Paul writes this little letter and he sends it back to Philemon to let Philemon know is this. Listen, bro, I, I got your brother here with me. He's your slave, but he's no longer a slave. He's free right now because him who the, he who the son set free is free indeed. 
and, and I'm going to send him back to you. But when he comes back to you, don't receive him back as a slave. Receive him back as a brother in Christ. Why does he do that? Paul does it because he wants the world to know how deep his love is for Christ. And how deep his love is for one another. Can we all stand? Come on, come on. Man, that's deep love. Huh? Deep love. The Bible says, if a man really wanted to show his love for one another, who would give their life? For someone else. Only Jesus would do that. He showed his love. This morning if you're here and you're not saved. I welcome you to come to give your life to Christ. If you give your life to him. Let me tell you what he'll give you in return. In return. He'll give you salvation. He'll give you a place. That when you die. You can be with him. Forever and ever. If you would just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Bible says I shall be saved. Just confess today. Accept salvation. So when you leave this world, you got somewhere to go. You got a place prepared for you. Is there one who would come? You may be here, you don't have a church home. You want to come and join the church this morning. You're already saved. You can come and join this morning. We welcome you to be a part of Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. We'd love to work with you in kingdom building, knowing that brothers and sisters work together for the cause of Christ. Is there one who would come this morning? Every head bow, if there's one who won't come, you can come. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for blessing us. Thank you for the example that Paul gives us to show how deep his love was for even a runaway slave so this morning, God, we thank you because we too were runaway slaves because we ran from you. But we thank you for having your arms open to us and receiving us back. We bless right now. We bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. God bless you. God bless you. going to make the tables ready as we prepare to give. Prepare to give this morning. I don't know about you, but that's how you show your love. When you give. Huh? Freely he's given to us. Freely we give back to him. Amen. Can we all stand as we read our offertory litany this morning? It's offering time. It's time to bring our tithes and offerings. To whom does the tithe belong? Who should tithe? Why should we tithe? How much should we tithe? What is God's promise to us when we tithe? What kind of giver does the Lord love? God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. God bless you. Our ushers going to now come and they will lead us to the tables this morning.
vencer I don't have to worry about the things that I can call him in the middle of the night, and when I call, it does not matter. Jesus promised, Jesus promised, he'll take care of me. Jesus promised, he'll take care of me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about the things you said. All I have to do is live right. And believe. I can call him in the morning. And when I call, it does not matter. Jesus promised. Jesus promised. Jesus promised. He'll take care of me. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you now for this time that you've given us that we can give back unto you. We ask right now that you would receive our gifts as we've given on this day. But then, God, we ask that you would bless our gifts as we've given on this day. For God, we've given our tithe, we've given our offerings unto you to be obedient to your will and your way. So we thank you now for the time that we have given, and we thank you for the tithe that we have given. And so we ask for your blessings now. Bless our giving and bless each giver. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. You may take your seats. first Sunday of February as we've come to commune together we come to remember what Jesus did and he asked us that we would remember that by coming around the table it doesn't have to be the first Sunday it could be any Sunday but we ought to remember what he did for us it is now Lebanon's custom that we come around the table on the first Sunday of each month that we can remember what he did as he set with his disciples to give them a new commandment that they love one another. So as we've come to commune today, Paul writes these words to the church at Corinth, Corinth 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Verse 23, Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever ye drink it in remembrance of me. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Deacon Charles Johnson if he would come and pray over the elements this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity, God, to recognize your son, Jesus, in the bread and the cup, God. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless these elements, sanctify them, Lord Jesus. 
that may we receive it, God, that it will be pleasing to you. Now, Lord, search our hearts. Search our hearts, God. If there's anything in it that's going to hinder us from receiving this bread and this wine, cast it away, God. Cast it in the sea of forgiveness that it may never return to hinder your people again. Now, Lord, we love you and we praise your name. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. to the rising sun. Let us drink the cup. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together. drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy Together on our knees. Let's go down one more. Let's praise God together on our knees. When I fall, when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun. together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall, when I fall on my knees, with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord,
beautiful song that says, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day, one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood. It was the blood. I know it was the blood. Uh -uh. I know it was the blood for me. I on the cross know it was the blood for me. It was that saving blood. It was that saving blood. It was that saving blood. It was that saving blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood. Y'all come this side for me. I know it was. Oh, it was the blood. For me, one day when I was lost, Jesus died. I know it was. He's coming back again. He's coming back. He's coming back again. For me. For one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I knew it was the blood. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood. He never said a mumbling word. One day when I was lost, oh, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood. Has there been anyone been omitted? Has anyone been omitted? It was Jesus when he met with his disciples to eat the Passover meal. The Bible says that they ate the Passover meals. And after eating the Passover meal, the Bible says that Jesus took bread and he broke it and he gave thanks for it. And he said, this is my body which was broken for you. Take ye and eat. In the same manner, he took the cup, common cup of wine, and he gave thanks for it. And he said, take ye and drink. For as often as ye eat, Often as ye drink, ye show forth my death until I shall come again. The word of God said they sang a hymn and they went out to the Mount of Olives. We have no Mount of Olives that we go out to, but we go back to our homes and to our communities that we may spread the love of Jesus everywhere that we go. May we all stand. Go today 
to show how deep your love is to someone. Father, we bless your name. We thank you now as we depart from this place. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your watchful eye. Help us, God, to always exhibit you everywhere that we go, that the world may know that the Christ that lives on the inside of us, we bless your name. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, who's able to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding glad joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be the most henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. 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 And amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Go in peace. <laughs>